Last night we told you about Arkansas's place in history as one of three states housing Titan II nuclear missiles during the Cold War. Tonight a tragedy at the missile site north of Searcy that killed 53 men. In tonight's THV Extra, THV's Charles Krausen spoke with one of the only two survivors. Charles? Liz, Gary Lay knew all about the Titan II missiles scattered throughout north central Arkansas. After graduating high school in 1965, he had a chance to pick up some extra cash before heading off to college. His first day on the job at the silo north of Searcy, August 9th. It's a day he remembers like it was today. All of a sudden there was a big swish type sound, similar to like when you light a gas stove in the morning. And you could hear all the men, you know, down below on a God help me. And there was a lot of scurrying and a lot of clanking and it totally black. 53 guys that go to work one day and uh, why me? And why was, did I get out of there? Their memories and questions still haunting Gary Lay even today. Almost 45 years after the greatest tragedy in the U.S. Air Force's Titan II missile program's history. I mean, you think about a lot of that. Lay was 17 and had just graduated high school when his father approached him about working in the silo north of Searcy. You know, temperature in the, uh, in the silo was 68 degrees when it was 110 outside. The guys were good to me. I met a lot of really interesting people, but it was just a great place to work. Lay worked cleanup for the construction crew who had been brought in for a series of upgrades called Project Yard Fence. Clean up, sweep, follow the guys around, do this, do that. I had been working in the bottom of that silo all morning. Came out for lunch at uh, quarter to 12. Uh, started back down in the hole at a quarter to one and, and uh, I stopped to visit with you know, three or four other guys. It was a conversation that saved Lay's life. At 10 minutes after one, a fire broke out in the silo, filling the hole with smoke and toxic fumes and knocking out the power. What happened was when the fire blazed up, it sucked the oxygen out. When it breathed again, it blew again. And it actually blew three times. Lay says instinct took over and he, along with a group of coworkers, first tried to escape by going down a ladder to a different level. I stopped and I started back up that ladder. Climbing back to where he started, Lay began feeling his way around the missile's gun barrel. Which was extremely hot, and when I got to the end of the cable, I passed out. Lay was rushed to the closest hospital in Searcy. And that was the longest ride I think I've ever been on. And I mean, I was literally just on fire from my standpoint. Another worker, Hubert Saunders, also escaped the fire, but his injuries were minor compared to Lay's. And of course, you know, uh, it took more into the evening and, and more of, of the coverage and more of the investigation to realize, hey, there's nobody else coming out of there. Lay received treatment from the Lackland Air Force Base's burn unit to relieve the pain. And they sprayed me every day, and, and my mother couldn't figure out why I wouldn't have any pain. And she bent over to kiss me goodnight on the forehead one night, and her whole mouth went numb. That's how strong the, the medicine was. Lay says the gravity of what happened became clearer in the days that followed. There were so many people affected, so many ideas, so many opinions, the media reporting one thing, the reality of what happened was another. The Air Force says the fire started after a welder accidentally cut through a hydraulic hose, but Lay refutes that claim. What by welding? I was there. He believes the fire started from a ruptured hose leaking hydraulic fluid onto a power unit. But the reason for so many lives lost, Lay believes, came down to security, which he says became too relaxed as civilian crews came onto the missile bases. The construction workers were able to go into the silo without an escort. And the day it happened, and this is just reality, there was not an escort down there. Have Chrysler Dodge Jeep is one. Today, Lay is the owner of GWL Advertising in Little Rock. He doesn't show any physical scars from the fire, thanks to the clothes he wore at the time and the medical treatment from the Air Force. But looking back, he still has questions about what could have been done to save his co-workers. These were good people. Within the past decade, Lay has begun speaking to historical societies about what happened that day. It was an experience that I'll never forget. I mean, even this 43 years later. He's even spoken to family members of the men who died in the fire. It was good to be able to tell them, from my perspective, uh, what happened. 53 guys that go to work one day and uh, looking forward to going home that night and their life was over and had absolutely no idea. Now Lay's never been back to the Titan II site near Searcy. A memorial for the 53 men who died there sits on the road leading to where the site once was. There's also another at the Little Rock Air Force Base. Arkansas is also home to a second Titan II accident in Damascus. 
Coming up tomorrow night, you'll hear from the men on the ground there when the silo exploded and their mad dash to recover a live nuclear warhead from the site. Liz. All right, Charles, thank you. Now for more on our Titan 2 series, go to todaysthv.com and click on the story.